Hello, this is Mike Lila, and today I want to show you how to take that beautiful die that we created in Cinema 4D and control it as a Kalana object in uh, Jiglib and Away 3D. Now, I just want to make an important point here, is that the particular Kalana object that we have made is one where you just throw textures onto polygons. There's another way you can do that and actually, actually use UV mapping. And uh, so we won't deal with UV mapping today, but we'll deal with this simple textures on polygon sides, which is very similar to what's done in SketchUp. But when you work with more complex uh, polygons, that's like, for example, in 3D S Max or for motion graphics, you actually use kind of a polygon or UV mapping technique. And so there's two ways to do this. Today we're just dealing with the simple textures on polygon sides. Very important to realize that. So what I'm going to do is open up Flash Builder, and we're going to talk about how you need to bring all this into uh, a way 3D and get it working. So what I have here is a file called Jiglib Dice, and uh, I've actually thrown those folders that we created in to here last time. So let's review that. So we had created two objects or two assets, a DAE file, which is your Kalata file, and your text folder, which has all your images in it. We need to throw that into the Away the 3D folder. So what I've done here, I've taken the code off the Tut site that we talked about last time. I brought it into a Flash Builder, and I've turned it into a design project, so it doesn't work like an ActionScript class anymore. I just have to go along and actually had to go along and tear that code apart. And I've showed you how to do that in previous videos. Just review those and get it into Flash Builder so I can use Design View. Because I want to work in Design View, so it allows me to bring in panels and actually do some analysis in this window. And it, you can actually build websites so much faster in Flash Builder than you can in Flash. And uh, there's a little bit of a performance hit for 3D, of course, but you know the speed that you get in building these websites is just amazing, especially when you couple that with Flash Catalyst. And so just a little bit of uh, what we're doing here and where we're going with all of this. So what I've done now is I've taken my uh, DAE file and I threw it right into the default uh, folder. And so you can see it's appeared right here at the bottom right here. So I put my images folder, my text folder, and my assets folder. And there it is right there. So if you open that up, you can see all those images. And now I want to go to the code itself and show you what has to be done to get this to work in a way 3D. It's not necessarily an easy process, but go to my code and use it as a template. So let me just walk you through the steps and you can check out the code from my book site. So the first thing you need to make sure that you do is import all the correct uh, Away 3D uh, um, classes. Then you got your Lotus class here, which will have your Kalata in it. Then you want to make sure that you get your Jiglic stuff in there, and you definitely want that J box. So that's going to be your bounding box for your Kalata file. And then I'm, of course, going to create a Kalata uh, variable, so I can actually talk to that Kalata file. Now what I'm going to do here is a little different that's done by some people. I'm going to embed my assets. So when I start this game up, everything comes up automatically. I don't have to wait for loading. So I've embedded my DAE file, and I've embedded my uh, images uh, of the different sides of the cube. So let's take a look at those embed statements. So this is very important. You're going to be referring to the my die class and to the text map 1, text map 2, text map 3, text map 4, 5, and 6. And you have to convert those. You have to cast those into a bitmap object. So what I'm going to do is create uh, the six materials. We'll call this material 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And I'm also going to create a container for that. And I'm going to have a J box that's going to surround that container once I throw that skin into uh, the rigid body system. So once again, remember model one is important. That 3D container. That's where I'm gonna put. That's where I'm gonna throw everything, and then I'm gonna throw it into my uh, J box so it can be controlled in Jiglib. So let's go down a little bit more. So in this initiate materials method, what I do is I take all those uh, embedded images and I cast them into a bitmap. So this is that wonderful cast class which confuses all the paper vision people. And that gives me the ability to throw this into a bitmap. So now I have all these bitmap materials, material 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Let's go down a little bit lower. And then what I need to do, I need to create my cube. So I create a little create a die uh, method. And in my create die method, I'm going to declare my Kalata object, and then I'm going to scale it. And it scales pretty well. And then what I need to do is I need to actually uh, kind of parse that geometry and throw it into my Model 1. And once that geometry is parsed and thrown into Model 1, then I have the ability, in a sense, to throw materials onto each side. Now, this is the important piece right here. You do not need to be afraid of opening up and reading Carlotta files, so get in the habit of doing it. Because I need to reference the different polygon size so I can put the materials on them. So I create these bitmap materials. And now I want to throw these bitmap materials on the different polygon size of the model that I've parsed. So how do I know what the names of those are? Go to your Carlotta file open it up and start going through it and find those names. Now for paper vision it's important to know these names, the image names. Make sure those are in your uh, uh, system. But down here lower you can actually reference those by ID. So I go a little bit lower in my Kalata file. Now it looks a mess but once you get used to 
reading Carlotta files, this will get easy, and this is in the library materials. So I talk about Carlotta files in my book, so make sure you go through and read that, but also there's quite a bit of information on the web as well. And you can see each one of these materials are referenced, ID1, ID3, ID8, ID13, so they're all referenced. And I can access now and throw materials onto them by referring to those references. So let's go back to the code. So in the code, what I do is actually, that's exactly what I do. I go from those references. I wouldn't have known those unless I'd gotten those from my Carlotta files. And I actually am now throwing those materials on those different polygons from different reference sides. Now, once all those materials are thrown on those different sides, I'm ready to bring that into my JBox so I control it as a rigid body in Jiglib. But I need to use this wonderful Away 3D mesh to do that. So I'm going to take my model, throw it into Away 3D mesh, and then I'm going to throw that into my JBox and I'm going to throw that into my die body. Now let's recall what is die body. Hold your control key down and click on that. It'll take you back to that reference. It's my J box. There you go. Let's control F to go back to where we were. And we're back in creating my J box. And so there you go. I have a J box. It's my bounding box, which is bounding what? My model. That's my parse geometry, which I put all my cube stuff on. And now that I have that done, I need to make sure that I turn on the physics. So just go physics.addbody, die body, and once that's, once that's been done, I'm going to render that to the scene. And then, most importantly, I need to take that and push it into a particle system. So I've created a particle system of my dices, so I can have as many dices as I want. So I can actually run this method over and over again right here and create as many uh, die as I want. And I think in this particular case, I create two. And, uh, but you could create ten if you wanted to. But just the more you create, the more processor that you're going to need to run them. And so once that's thrown into the My Dice Array, then I can actually control the physics of that. And let's go down just a little bit lower. And this is all being done uh, using the random force that I've created. And I'm just randomizing the force on the die. So each time I click the screen, the die force is randomized. And all that is done by adding that die force to the dice array uh, that I created, that I threw all my rigid bodies into. Let's just sort of just click on that so we can actually take a look at that and you can see that indeed that is a vector array that's a flash that's native to flash 10 and uh, that's how it's done so uh, a little bit complicated here so now let's run the code and see what we get so come along here and hit the uh, little run button go ahead and OK so when you run your system there's your die right there and you can see that nice beveled edge that we were going for and they actually look a little more like real die now, in this particular case, though, we actually lost our reflective uh, material on our die. So we'd have to go back and do a little bit of work to get that back. But you see everything is reacting fine with the physics. And the box looks nice as well. And all this now is running in Flash Builder. So you have the ability now to come along and build panels and web stuff very rapidly and incorporate this into websites and have other things, not just 3D running. So uh, that's one of the purposes of using Flash Builder. And uh, we'll be doing a lot more with it. So that's an example of what we just created. And it's working great. So let's go back and review what we did. So when I run the code in Flash Builder, I have this creation complete method right here. And so creation complete will fire this initiation app. An initiation app, I'm going to run create dice twice. So I'll have two die. And let's roll over that and click. And in that die method, I'm going to create my Carlotta object, get it scaled. I'm going to go to the Carlotta file and parse the geometry and put the different uh, cube sides on. I'm going to throw that into an Away 3D mesh, that's the secret, and throw that into a JBox so it can be bounded. Now you may have to work with these boundary items just a little bit to get it right, so I had to actually fudge, fudge around a little bit until it was bounded correctly for my scaling. And once I had that die body, I could throw it, turn on the physics. Once the physics was turned on, I was able to uh, just render it to the screen and then push it into a die array, my dice's array, so that I could control them as a particle system in Jiglib. So here's all the code that I use to control that particle system. Make sure you go to my book blog, download the code, read the article there, and you'll be ready to bring in these type of Carlotta files and control them in a way 3D. And we'll also take a look at how to do this in Paper Vision next. So thanks for listening. This was Mike Lively.